Let me just start by saying I have no idea how this video is going to turn out, but we thought we'd turn the camera on and just go for it. Okay, so we've made these videos about bad habits and I've always asked you guys in the comments to air out all of your bad cleaning habits in the comments, but Chad and I thought it might be interesting if we kind of air each other's bad cleaning habits on camera because A, it's kind of really funny to rag on the other person and B, you guys should know, like, yeah, we live in a pretty good looking house, but we both have bad cleaning habits. We try not to let them take over our lives too much, but sometimes they get the better of us and it's our job to make fun of each other and out each other on camera. So shall we? <laughs> Just a quick reminder, if you haven't done so already, to subscribe to the Clean My Space channel and give this video a thumbs up if you have someone in your life who you would like to confront about their bad cleaning habits. Okay, so who's gonna uh, you go? You should probably go first. No, you could go first. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure you should go first. Mm. Why don't we rock, paper, scissors to see who goes first? Fine. All right, that's, that's two out of three. That's a good way to go. You ready? On three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, me. One, two, three. Ah, oh, you went with rock every time? I did. All right, I'll go first. Because I'm gonna rock this. All right, so here's one of many of Chad's bad cleaning habits. Now, I have to give him full credit because he loves tidying, thank God, because that's a challenge for me. But the problem is when you tidy, yeah. you put things away and then only you know where they go. Like, it's supposed to be, there's a home for everything, everything in its home. And the logical home that I think it should be in, for some reason, is different from the logical home you think the thing should be in. So then when I look for the thing, perfect example, measuring spoon, he puts it in the junk drawer, I put it in the utensil drawer. Like, the utensil drawer makes sense. I never know where the thing is, but then I'll ask you and you'll say, oh, it's in the junk drawer. Yeah, I do that. That is not a good habit. I'm completely guilty of that. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great like, start. Good. Full circle. Okay. Melissa, we need to talk about your never-ending stream of water glasses. Uh, Melissa has this habit of having a glass of water and using a lot, like we have these large glasses, they're like a foot tall and she puts about four drops of water in it and she drinks two drops of the water and then really not. strategically spread throughout the house are about 14, at any given point, there's about 14 water glasses with like two drops of water in it because you- It's convenient to have water in different locations around the house in case I get thirsty. <laughs> That's okay. There are not 14, <laughs> okay. but I do do that. Yeah, okay, fair enough. <laughs> We're married, so we share a bedroom, and I know Chad's laundry habits inside and out. And I have to say, of the two of us, I think I'm better at doing laundry than you are. I'm just more efficient. Like, Chad will do 75% of his laundry, so let me explain this to you. He lets it build up literally for months, like you're on your last ugly pair of underwear. <laughs> then you'll get to the point where you're ready to do your laundry. Yeah. So he overstuffs the machine, yeah. problem number one. <laughs> Then he'll forget that the yeah. stuff is in the washer. Yeah. I have had to do several vinegar loads to rescue your stuff because then I'll come down with like a little half load and I can't do it because there's a traffic jam on the laundry. And then when you do finally get the load in the dryer and then bring it upstairs, you'll fold it, but then you don't put it away. So we have laundry pot, like folded piles on dressers, on little tables and corners on the floor. Like, just put this stuff away. Okay, Melissa, I love you, but this is one that I had to point out, and it's kind of a bit of a weird one because you kind of make it 90% of the way, but then that last 10%, the last 10% push is uh, just not there. And it comes, it's the recycling, it's the recycling kind of system that we have in our house. So we're really good at recycling whenever we have a can or whatever, yeah. uh, in the kitchen or upstairs or whatever. You're really good at, so our recycling, uh, just resides in our garage, which is this door right here. And you will make it all the way to this little ledge, which is behind you. Or sometimes the door leads Or sometimes to the literally right by the door, and that's where you will put it. You won't open the door, and I appreciate sometimes it's winter, so it might be a little chilly for you. However, it's, 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 it's not always fun to walk by that area and just see a little pile of recycling waiting to literally just 
go into the recycling Well, pit. you know why I do that? Why? Because you put it in the box. Ah, well forget I said anything. Another thing that really annoys me about laundry is when I go to the dryer, uh -huh. literally I pull out a stuffed animal from the lint trap yeah. after you've done yours, which yeah. tells me that you don't empty the lint trap. Yeah. Do you ever empty it? I often forget. I have occasionally done it because I know you can set your house on yeah. fire, so I, I know mean, it's so a really important answer. thing to do. However, strangely, I, I, I clearly don't care about that because for some reason I, I just do not empty the lint trap. I'm collecting lint to make a stuffed animal for our child. <laughs> with all of the <laughs> lint that you're leaving. Stuffed animals. Anyway. So I thought long and hard about your laundry shortcomings, and you'll be happy to know that you don't have very many at all. Your laundry game is Strong, on point, yeah. and I'll give it up to you right there. However, uh, when you're tired, which recently has been more than kind of traditionally, mm -hmm. uh, you will have the ability to kind of come home and if you need to take a nap or if it's like later and you need to go straight to bed, um, you can literally like leave a little trail of clothes. I will do that. On the floor yeah. and just no regard whatsoever. And, and as much as I'm a piler, as much as I like kind of put things like and I shouldn't and all of the rest, one thing I don't do is put clothes on the floor because it just it just doesn't whatever. But you God would... forbid! <laughs> Who leaves clothing on the floor? What horrible person does that? <laughs> now that you guys know all of Chad's dirty laundry about his dirty laundry. You really I mean, <laughs> focused on the laundry. <laughs> well, part. you seem to like need assistance in the laundry, laundry area. But the kitchen, you're mostly good at the kitchen, yeah. but you have a couple of things. First of all, I feel as though you're a little bit disrespectful of the cross-contamination rule. Okay. Like you're not as particular about making sure that you don't cross contaminate things in the kitchen when it comes to cleaning yeah. or like if you're making the cats their raw food sometimes if there's a little spill you won't clean it up after uh -huh. that, that's a thing okay but the other things that I'll say is like if the dishwasher is unloaded and again like you write the videos you know this stuff you should check the dishwasher put the dishes in the dishwasher if it's dirty instead of putting it on the counter but you will just leave the dishes on the counter yes not all the time, but a lot of the time. And you'll do it just because you procrastinate. You're like, oh, I'll do it later. Yes. But sometimes you never do. Quite often, I never do. <laughs> and the other thing is you don't rinse your dishes. So like you'll eat a granola bar and you'll dunk it in a glass of milk. And then I'll see the glass of milk that was sitting in your office from four days ago. And it's got like the milk crust at the bottom. And then hardened in the milk crust, like a dinosaur fossil, are like oat flakes that are stuck in there and then I know it's not going to come out in the wash so I have to do like some extra pre it's like a job for me yes. that's a habit <laughs> all right and Melissa I have two words for you the blender <laughs> the blender you Melissa guys, has... I don't even think we shouldn't even talk about this. no we really should we really should because I've been sitting here listening about my laundry so let me tell you about your blender your blender which gets used every single morning you use it man you use the heck out of that blender so you have a really fancy blender it's a quiet one that's really nice and it whirs up your pancakes banana or pancakes smoothies. in the morning yeah. or your smoothies and uh, you actually made a video you've made two videos about how to quickly well we've made videos, we've made videos. <laughs> spoiler either us, either i us. wrote that video that's right so it's like put a some, fill it up with some water put a drop in put it back onto the blender blend it away and there you go you have a clean blender however melissa's ends up just <laughs> full of this water which looks like it's from a swamps well behind let me just explain my my rationale here because I will soak it after because the chia seeds get stuck uh, onto the sides of the blender right so you have to soak it a little bit but then I get busy so it sits in the sink <laughs> it's like a 12 hour soak. it is <laughs> it is not the great I'll tell you guys it's like a very bad habit of mine it's embarrassing but um yeah it's true it's true and you know what once in a blue moon you'll do like a good deed from your heart and you'll clean the blender for me once in a, once in a, <laughs> once in a blue moon from the bottom moon. of your heart, Once you'll a do a good moon. deed and like you'll clean five it. Five times a week. No, a I clean it. Okay, so you're incredibly good 
and I'm not very good at all at cleaning an actual surface, like mm. cleaning it or disinfecting it or like a kitchen counter, or like a sink or something like that. Yeah, You're I can excellent. disinfect the life out of a sink. But when it comes to like little piles of clutter or just kind of like stuff or spreading out, kind of like when like you don't have all of your kind of things together in a neat little pile, that's a thing for me because I like it because I, I like kind of keeping things in order. Mm -hmm. And you kind of just like really spread out. Yes. Like whenever I'm you're- I'm like the suburbs. You're exactly like the suburbs and you spread out and um, like you could have a pile of magazine. Oops, oh, sorry, Molly. You could have a pile of magazines and they could be completely disarrayed. Mm -hmm. And I'm more of one to like kind of keep them all organized. It's not a huge thing, but since we're all airing our dirty laundry, as it were, I mm -hmm. thought I would bring this one up as well. Yeah, well, I mean, and this is something we know, like I'm really good at the cleaning part of cleaning and you're really good at the tidying and organizing part of cleaning. Which makes for a great super team. If we actually did the things we're supposed to That's do. That's true. <laughs> Another thing I forgot to mention is that you'll have like the half-worn clothes, yes. like the clothes that you're not quite ready to put in the dirty laundry, yes. but the ones that you want to wear again. Yes. So a normal person might just say, okay, I'll fold it up, put it back in the drawer. No. But you're just like, no, I'll make like a mannequin out of my <laughs> dresser and I'll just yeah, drape I the clothes. Like, you walk in, you think there's like 40 people standing in our room because there's shirts all over the place. I am one of those. Fully draped out. I'm one of those chair people that build up a chair, like the Mount Washmore of yeah. just like piles a of chair clothes. Drove. Because if it's clean, it goes in the closet or it goes in a drawer. Well, it should. It should. <laughs> Sometimes it makes it there. And if it's dirty, I, I have no problem getting it into the laundry bin if it's, if it's dirty. It's when I want to wear something kind of like a few times before washing it. And it's kind of in limbo, so mm -hmm. it doesn't really have a home. And I can appreciate how that probably gets annoying. For all of the bad habits that we talked about, I want to say a couple of things because it was really fun to air the dirty laundry on camera. But at the same time, we have learned, because we've lived together for 11 years, uh, we've learned a lot about each other. And we also, we have a few fundamental rules. A, we don't want to argue all the time. So we're really good about like making fun of the other person for their bad habits, but we don't like nail the person for their bad habits. Um, typically we're really good at helping out where we know the other person struggles. So I know my strengths. I'm well aware of the things he told me as my weaknesses and vice versa. So we'll help each other out. Like he knows the things I'm good at and not good at. He'll hook a sister up and vice versa, which is great. Uh, and our common goal is that we want to live in a clean space. So it isn't like a 50-50 thing, like it, 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 you want it to ideally be as close to a 50-50 thing as possible, but when I'm making up something that you're not doing it, I, I'm not doing it to help you out, I'm doing it because we both live in this house and it's out of respect. The house deserves 100% of our attention collectively, and if it doesn't necessarily balance out 50-50, that doesn't make it so that the other person needs to somehow, you know, pull their weight, the house actually deserves to have it done. So you're doing it for the sake of living in a clean and serene home. And that actually made me resentful at the beginning because I felt like, well, I don't want to do any more than 50% of what I actually right. have to do. Right. And that was something that we've worked on for years. So now I know if there's a time where he's busy or doing something and he can't participate in the cleaning, I have to take over and you do I it felt a like lot you had well. a chart. Like you knew Def like I like, a, a like a pie chart. If and you, you knew know. exactly what you had done Definitely. and I hadn't done and you I knew So that brings us to this week's comment question. We're gonna have some fun with this one. Cause we want you guys to confess in the comments down below what is your worst cleaning habit or what is your partner, spouse, parent, brother, roommate. sister, roommate, whoever, what is their worst cleaning habit? It's a safe space here. You all have aliases. No one's really gonna know who you are. So you can just say what you need to say. We'll read it. We'll have a good laugh. You guys know all of our stuff. So have fun with it. Now it's your turn. Speaking of picking up slack, Molly and I are gonna let Chad play you out on this one. Here are a couple of the other videos I think you're going to enjoy, so you can click those. If you wanna learn more about Maker's Microfiber Cloths, you can click this button right here. There's a button down there that lets me know you care, so click it if you like this video, and click this button right here to subscribe to Clean My Space for more great cleaning videos. Thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next time.